As we continue our countdown to Christmas with simple blacksmithing projects, I thought we would make a little door or drawer pull for cabinetry. This is a New Mexican style pull, really quite common in rustic furniture in New Mexico. This is a, a little pivoting pull. The pull is attached to the back plate with this kind of a staple affair. I think there's probably a name for this. When it's a hinge, they refer to them as snipe hinges but I'm not sure if this is still a snipe when it's a door pull. But anyways, these two, this is two pieces. They are bent over and clinched into the back of the wood framing of the door or the drawer, and that's what holds this in place. Really very solid, very secure, simple to make, no threaded fasteners needed, and a very nice, elegant pull. Again, very common in rustic New Mexican furniture. To make this project, we're going to start with six inches of quarter inch round bar to make the pull itself. A piece of quarter inch round bar about two inches long that we'll use to make the staple portion or the snipe, whatever we want to call that. And then the escutcheon plate is actually a big washer that came on some long bolts that hold cable spools together. And these are just ideal for this. But if you don't have this found object that's just perfect and ready to go, you can cut a disc out of something between 16 gauge and 8th inch, put a hole in it, dish it in a swedge block, you're good to go. We'll start with this really hard part. You just want to heat this up, wire brush the rust off of it, it kind of cleans it up. As that cools, I'll put some paste wax on it, but we don't need to show that. Then the next piece will just be this staple. We're just going to draw that out to a good point. Keep it about a quarter inch wide as you make it flat. Certainly if you've got some quarter inch wide flat bar that's this thin, you could use that, but I don't. We we'll just continue to thin this out till the whole thing is Probably a little less than an eighth inch thick. Yeah, looks like that end split. I'll file that to clean it up. It's just nice to do this first so it's done and ready to go. Turn it around, do the other end. Do the same thing to the other end. I suppose you could probably cut little strips out of something wider out of a little piece of sheet. This isn't that hard though. That's really about all this needs. Looks a little thick there, I suppose. Yeah, we'll turn it around and thin that out. And then this split end, I'll just file that to shape after it cools. I'm knocking the corners off so there's just no sharp edges. That's all we really need there. I know I said that once before. I mean it this time. So we're just going to draw this out into a taper. It's a square point. And this one we're going to round up. This isn't a spike. This is a Nice little curl, little scroll. So we went square, then octagon, then round. 
We'll take another heat and we'll scroll that up. And I kind of work the end of it into the scroll a little bit so it's not just a scroll on the end of a bar. I want this to flow into that. Do the same thing to the other end. You can actually see the tip of this heat up because of the quick hammering. And that kind of helps. But it's really just that fast to do that round taper. We scroll that up just like we did the other one. Try and make these look the same. They're going to be sitting right next to each other. No matter how hard you try, they'll probably never look exactly the same, but you don't want it to be a real glaring difference. That's not too bad there. Now we're going to heat that up and we're going to bend this into a ring and then we'll see what we need to do to adjust it. This is another one of those little things that could be a little bit fussy to try and bend. Really easy to mess up. So take your time. And bending forks or a little jig would make this a lot easier if you're making a bunch of them. But it's not too bad. You'll see I got that off. So I need to push this side over. I cooled the scroll on the longer leg and then I can bring the other leg down until it matches. And if you've already done one, use it as a comparison to see what you want the other one to look like because they should look about the same. And by pushing this off center a little bit, I can get in there and straighten this out. Just a little convenience bend. It's one of those things that the more you mess with it sometimes, the worse it looks. I'm just going to the vise and using that gentle squeeze will help straighten things like that out. I can bring these back in line. And that looks better. It's still not quite perfect though. This one's still a little bit too long. We should be able to fix that. That made that a lot better. It's not quite the same shape as the other one. But we are getting much closer. We mostly just need to bring this in in the middle and that should help give it the shape we want. I can pretty well guarantee that if I was making these as a production item, I would make a little bending jig that helped guarantee some of these things came out the same. It's certainly doable all by hand at the anvil, and a bending fork and a vise makes it even quicker and easier. But if you're trying to make a profit doing these, if this is something you want to do a whole lot of, I'd make the jig. But a gentle squeeze ought to take care of this. That's much closer. I need to bend the little scrolls out a little bit more. So you can just kind of hold that and get in here with a chisel to pry with a little bit. But the other one's also open just a little bit. So that's pretty darn good, I think. Get this flattened out. A 
wire brush this. And then we need to put the staple on it. Now I've bent the staple around in a U shape. I thought I'd film that, but apparently I didn't. I'm going to put it in here and we're going to take it to the vise and we're going to close it up and kind of forge it around here to make sure that that's a nice even curve there. I'm just going to put that down in the vise. Close the two halves up. Kind of work that round and make sure this pivots. That's really all there is to it. Well, it's a nice, simple little cabinet pull. I now have two of them, so hopefully I can build a cabinet one of these days. These can go on. They're good for cabinet doors, drawers, just about anything like that that needs a little pull. You can make these bigger, you can make these smaller. A lot of the ones I've seen that are historical are a little bit smaller than this, so that's not a bad way to go. But you can see how fiddly some of these things can get trying to hold on to something and still get a hammer in there to work on it. So that's where making a jig to bend these around might be worth the trouble. And we'll cover jig making at some other time. If I remember to do it after the first of the year, maybe we'll make more of these and I'll just make a jig for it. Because these are something that I wouldn't mind having for sale in my Etsy shop. I hope you enjoyed that video and can give it a thumbs up. If you haven't done so already, I would love it if you hit that subscribe button. If you feel like supporting the channel financially, there are links down in the description for PayPal and Patreon to provide donations. Those are simply donations. The content is free and the content will remain free. Feel free to stick around, watch a few of the other videos, share the videos with your friends, but then make time in your day to get out to your shop, make something, but stay safe, wear your safety glasses. We'll see you for the next one.